Let's imagine that management read clean code and decided if statements are bad, switch statements are bad, control statements generally bad, everything should happen with polymorphic inheritance. How could you rebel against that? Um, because I'm going to assume you have as much interest in that as I have, which is none at all. So one way we can do is grab into the toolbox of functional programming actually and redefine it all ourselves. And let's go even a step further and just say, let's also remove for loops, while loops, and all other fancy operators. We're just going to stay with polymorphism. Um, or should be staying with polymorphism. Of course, we're not going to. So <clears throat> we can redefine lambda uh, booleans as simple functions that take two arguments and return either the left side or the right side, depending if it's true or false. So for example, we can define true as the function that returns um, the left argument and false as the function that returns the right-hand side argument. And this will make sense in a second as soon as we define if, which we already can do. Let's define if. which takes in a Boolean value, a true case and a false case. And we can simply call bool of the true and false case and execute it. So all three are functions because we're doing lambda calculus. And we just said true returns the left or right side argument depending if it's true or false. So if bool is true, we're going to return t and then execute t and if false if bool is false we're going to return f and execute f and that's exactly what a switch statement does so if we for example use this and we put in true and we just do a console log of true in the true case and in the false case false if i run this we get output false uh, true. And if I input false here, we get output false. So we already got back our um, if else. But this is the easy thing to do. What is much more interesting is to get back uh, more Boolean operators because just having true and false isn't that interesting. And control loops, while statements, recursions, etc. Uh, let's also add another restriction because it's more interesting and I'll explain it later. <coughs> hmm. So uh, let's define Boolean operators, not and or, right? Not is the simplest one. It takes in a Boolean value and returns a new Boolean. Remember, Boolean is a function that takes two arguments and returns um, one of them. And we can just flip the order of the arguments, A and B. So if B is true, uh, if P is true, then we're going to return the left argument. And if we look at it, this is the behavior of false. And if P is true, we're going to return the right argument, which is the behavior of true. So not inverts. And let's think through um, and, which takes two arguments, again, which are two Boolean values here. Um, and if both are true, we want to return true. So if we return A and B, so if A and B are true, that means A returns the left value and B returns the left value. So it would return true here. If B is false, then A would return false already because it returns the left-hand argument. So we need to decide what do we do if A is false. And well, that's kind of simple. We just say false because uh, we only return true if both sides are true. So we need to go left, left. And or is quite similar. We take in two arguments and we can call um, doesn't matter which one we call. If we call A, yeah, 
Yeah, no, it doesn't matter. Well, it kind of matters if we're going to evaluate from left to right or right to left, but it doesn't matter. Um, sorry. Uh, right. So if A is true, we want to return true because the left hand side is always true then. Otherwise, we're going to return B. So if B is false and A is false, we're going to return right, right, which is the false state case. If B is um, true and A is false, we're going to return right, left, which is true again. We can convince ourselves of this by just using and false, um, false here. Let's copy this four times. Uh, and just go through the cases. True. True. True and true. And we expect the output false, 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 and true. That's what we're getting. And if we are using or instead, uh, we'd expect uh, false, true, true, true. And that's what we're getting. So we're already implementing basic Boolean logic. And the one thing that is left is while loops. <clears throat> I'm going to do while loops because uh, we can model um, for loops with while loops. And I'm going to add here the restrictions. We cannot use the left-hand side and the right-hand side because that is more interesting. And this is going to look a bit weird, but we need a fixed point operate, uh, combinator. What is a fixed point combinator? Um, it sounds a bit co more complicated than it is. The fixed point of a function is where the output of a function is its argument. So for example, uh, the function x uh, that takes argument of, of y that returns <clears throat> y times 2 has a fixed point at 2, uh, at 0, because it returns uh, 0 at 0, uh, because 2 times 0 is 0. The identity function, every argument is a fixed point of it, because it always returns its argument. And the absolute ha would be all positive numbers are the fixed point, right? A combinator is a function that, um, a fixed point combinator is a function that whose arguments are functions and its fixed point is a function. And to do while loops, we're going to do that with recursions. And once we have a fixed point, meaning a function that returns itself as a um, its argument as a as a value, we can model recursion by just calling the function on itself with the function being the fixed point itself. Um, it's gonna maybe make more sense in a second. So we have a function that um, takes in, uh, let me just write it out. And I'm gonna be a bit more careful here because it's not the easiest way to write. So there's a lot of brackets. And we're going to call this with the exact same function. Right. We just called, talked about it. We want a function that returns its argument. Um, it, um, yeah, that one returns itself. Um, sorry, that returns its argument. Yeah, exactly. That just returns its argument. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I'm st stumbling over this. So. The interesting thing is, let's try to understand what's happening. If we apply this and we just put this function in here, like let's just apply it like so, and we just replace u with this. One thing we're going to notice is we have the same structure here, but what happened is we gained another f and we're calling this f with this n. So we gained an n. And if we apply again, we're going to get another n and chain the n. So f is 
The same function is being called here with this argument n. Um, and we these ends are not the same. So this is uh, this would be um, n1, this would be n2, this would be n3. They're not the same ends. So we can control the iteration through changing this value um, through each call. And that's also what gets us our while loop. Let's undo this. <clears throat> so let's actually think about what a while loop is. So while we usually have some check in here, some function that checks something, right? It has some parameters, let's say X. And it has then a body that does something. That's the function we actually wanted to do, some useful work. And then it modifies X. These are the steps every while loop has to do. And the for loop is the same thing, except that we write the modifier usually in here. <clears throat> so we can model this by using this fixed point combinator. And the first argument is itself. We just said it's, um, it's a function that holds itself with itself as the argument. And I'm just calling a w for a while. And then we take the actual parameters, that's the n. Um, and the n here, we know already what we need. We need a function that is our check. We need some sort of conditional, that's our uh, value. And we need the body that does work. Now we also need a modifier, but I would just say let's let's the let the body return the new modified x. Then we skip a parameter here, and it makes our life a bit easier. <clears throat> and now we can write the actual code that we are interested in, and that becomes very simple. It's simply an if of a check over x. And in the positive case, we're going to call ourselves again. We're going to continue the iteration with the check. And um, we're going to execute body on x. Because uh, remember, body will return the modified x and body. And in the negative case, we're just not going to do anything. Um, so what will happen is we're going to execute body every time the check returns true. And that's basically a while loop. Now calling this while loop is a bit ugly, but uh, we'll fix that in a second. So let's, let's do an example call here. Let's say the check is um, equality for zero, right? If something's zero, we're going to stop. So let's invert this. Let's just implement a while loop, a uh, for loop, essentially. Um, let's start at three. And our body, um, let's just console log. X, and then return X minus one. And if we run this, And I messed up somewhere. Not is not defined. But not is defined. What? Is there a bracket issue? No. No, they, they're all closing where they're supposed to. This, yep, this is fine, but not. Oh, wait, it says EQ is not defined. Right, because we never defined the equality. Sorry, I just assumed we defined equality. Let's define equality. Um, 
which returns um actually what does it return we need a method of returning of actually creating a boolean value um Uh, so this takes a bool value in. And we can't do something like uh, boolean true false, right? Because if we had this, the, the ternary operator, we wouldn't need to bother redefining if. Uh, there's a trick we can do. This works actually in most languages, but in JavaScript, it's essentially easy, especially easy. Uh, we can return uh, um, let me type this out and explain it in a second. Please write just a plus. So, a Boolean value is usually just a bit, zero or one. We cannot convert in JavaScript numbers, uh, a Boolean to a number by just adding the plus sign in front of it. So if bool is true, we're going to return index one, which is the true uh, lambda. And if bool is false, we're going to uh, return the first index. So what we can now do is just uh, convert to lambda of a equals b. And let's add the inverse as well, convert to native. And that one is super easy. <clears throat> um, because remember, we're just returning the right or left value. Okay, now that we have equality in run this, we run through three times. So we have a for loop here. We could do an infinite loop by just not modifying this or have any other rule of modifying x here. And we can remove this um, notation here and actually get to um, a better function call by just using another layer of interaction, tag x body, and then doing the call here with check x body. And then we're just going to lose the square brackets here. Still works. <clears throat> and if we wanted to, we could get rid of the equality assignment as well. Um, for, for a quick example, how we could do that, I'm not going to do it, but a very simple way of doing it is, for example, let's say we have, actually, let's just, uh, yeah, let's just uh, do something. Uh, we have a function here. That's what we're interested in. And instead of having the definition above here, we can have it as an argument if we have a self-executing function, right? So we can just do this. And let's say this wants to use a while loop here. And then we could just do while here. And we basically replaced the assignment operator because this gets assigned to W and then we could use W in here. And we can nest this as much as we want. Um, so we just need to find the right definition order and then write it really long uh, lambda where we just uh, throw them in there, uh, self-executing lambda. And we also avoided the assignment operator. <clears throat> and the only thing left are just lambdas and the equality here, but we need the equality because otherwise we can't do anything um, in, in JavaScript because we cannot do any logic at all anymore. Right. And that's it.